Hey, what's up? Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Simply Pod Logical, a Simply Neological podcast. Hello. Today's episode is brought to you by Oats Overnight. It's mm. a healthy, delicious breakfast, a way to eat your oats, high in protein, low in sugar. It's basically like drinking an oat milkshake. And it's so easy that even Ben can make his own breakfast. Yeah, my favorite flavor is Mocha Dream. And it's so easy I could make it, but Christine is still nice and sometimes makes me my oats for I me. I usually <laughs> make them anyways, but the point is it's so easy to make that even Ben would be willing to because all you got to do is take the blender bottle they come with, pour in some milk of any choice. I mm -hmm. prefer oat milk personally, and then dump in the pack, shake it up, put it in the fridge, and then enjoy the next day. <laughs> you Yum. find using oat milk, you're not overloaded, overloaded with oat taste. You mean, am I oat for doing it? Are you oat for doing it? <laughs> I mean, I don't think so. <laughs> I'm an extra oat lover. All right. If you'd want to check it out, uh, it's oats.com slash simply and simply. use code simply for 10% off. Use my code for 10% off <laughs> on oats. Healthy breakfast. Thank you, Oats Overnight, for sponsoring this podcast. Thank you, Oats. Uh, so today we're going to talk about uh, manicures why people paint their nails. I wonder why. And if 2020 <laughs> is the end of the manicure, Christine. <laughs> yeah, this is a headline that scares me Another dearly. scary headline in 2020. Yeah. So there was an article that came out in the New York Times earlier this month or just last week called, Is This the End of the Manicure? As our socially distant way of life begins to feel normal, so too do naked nails. We'll link the article down below. Uh, it was written by Jessica Defino. Uh, and again, published in the New York Times. And uh, in a nutshell, the article is about how since quarantine, since COVID, mm -hmm. a lot of people have not been going to nail salons anymore because they can't or are choosing not to because it's not worth the risk. And they frame it as if this is a liberating thing that women no longer have to feel a pressure to paint yeah, their I'm, nails. I'm so <laughs> oppressed, you guys. Painting my nails. I do it for Ben. All right, so we're not going to read the whole article, but we're, I'm going to read a few excerpts just mm -hmm. to give people a general uh, feel of the argument, and you can read the whole thing. Uh, we'll put a link down below. But uh, Not so, sponsored. At the start of the pandemic, they described that things uh, felt frantic, fevered, uh, from beneath the stockpiles of hand sanitizer and shelf-stable food, an urgent existential question emerged, what will become of our fingernails? Uh, people were in panic mode, panic fueled by a subsequent flurry of at-home tutorials. Uh, how to give yourself a manicure, how to polish your toes to perfection, how to remove gels and acrylics, but also how to apply them again, how to buff, file, shape, and shine. The DIY content kept coming, constant and crazed. Did we do anything other with, than our nails before the coronavirus? Question mark. And then it calmed. I think people went through another phase, Ms. Hannah said. Isolation inspired introspection. Anxiety gave way to acceptance. As life in quasi-quarantine began to feel normal, naked nails did too. Now salons are back in, socially distanced business, but some former polished devotees are opting to go without and noticing naturally beautiful nails as a result. Uh, another founder of a different beauty brand says, I haven't gotten my nails done since March. After a while, I got used to the idea of not having manicured nails, especially when I noticed they were looking much healthier. Uh, it is in sense, in essence, the anti-manicure to just take care of your nails with oils and cuticle oils and moisturizer and stuff like that rather than painting them. And then the founder of Bare Hands, uh, who made a dry gloss manicure kit, said the percentage of people that really, really enjoyed going to the salon and getting a manicure wasn't that high. For many, regular mani pedis were more about compliance to beauty. And the long pause of the pandemic gave them permission to not have to comply with that standard. Going back to the original interview subject, Maz Hannah, they say women have kind of relaxed the beauty standards society's been forcing on them for so long. So this article got a lot of reaction in the <laughs> nail community, as you might expect. Mm -hmm. What do you think, simply, nail-logical? I would like to know to the author, who hurt you? <laughs> and at which point did you have a traumatic experience getting your nails done or someone judging you for your manicure? Because everything she just said says 
it shows to me like she just doesn't understand or appreciate that there's a whole other world out there of people enjoying the fun, the relaxing, the creative aspects of painting your nails and all the reasons except for vanity or pleasing some societal standard. Like, I don't even know what she's talking about. Like, what is the societal expectation of beauty when it comes to fingernails? I mean, what is it? <laughs> well, okay, this here's a good kind of opening question then. Why do you paint your nails? Oh, this is like... Is this too deep? Asking like, me why I breathe. <laughs> but like, I guess the assumption here is that people paint their nails because society expects women to have nicely painted nails. Is that true at all to any degree? And do you yeah. feel that at all in yourself, I guess? Yeah, no, that's a really interesting question because I know we want to tie this to makeup and be like, well, do we feel this way about makeup? Mm -hmm. But I do think there is a bit of a difference. While I can understand why there's societal expectations of on women to wear makeup because so they don't look tired or, you know, you open your eyes a little bit or hide your wrinkles and that all exists. Yeah. But that's because the face is the first point of contact for people when they're like making conversations or the first introduction to someone else is usually through their face once you see them anyways sure. it's not through their nails and i i don't understand how people judge someone and like who they are based on their fingernails i can see the argument for their face not that i'm like agreeing we should judge people whether or not they're wearing makeup but i understand how like socially we have done that to ourselves our culture mm -hmm. i don't see that same argument for your nails like i have never heard of anyone judging me or me thinking to judge others based on whether or not they were wearing nail polish. Like what? <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's much easier to understand the argument of nail, of uh, makeup being somewhat oppressive. Yeah. Like with like, the example you gave, like if a woman uh, doesn't wear makeup to the office, she oh, might you're tired. face some sort of judgment yeah. or people might assume she's tired because she doesn't look a certain way. Yeah, I can't really... I don't think the same thing really applies to nail polish from an outsider perspective. It almost seems to me that nail polish is a much more uh, kind of selfish pursuit. I don't mean that in a bad in way. In a positive, but like... Like you're doing yeah. it for yourself more. But I, a lot of people would say the same thing about makeup. They only... Do it for themselves. They yeah. wear makeup for themselves. When I... The most controversial thing I've ever said on this podcast was that makeup was superficial. And a lot of people got really mad at me and said mm. they use makeup and use makeup as a artistic pursuit for themselves and not to please other people. As do I, which you understand. You mm -hmm. know I don't wear makeup because I'm trying to impress you. No offense, but like that's not why I <laughs> have ever worn makeup. Would. No, okay. <laughs> but you you recognize that though, so you yeah. know that too. But so I guess I wonder if this article does this article have a huge blind spot in that it's not recognizing all the women who paint their nails just for themselves at home or, and or not even men. at salons and or men. Mm -hmm. uh, or are we sort of in a bubble and do most women who get their nails done, are they doing it out of uh, a sort of a different context? Yeah. So, Cause like I, I, you're not someone who even goes to salons. Yes. Uh, just to disclaim my own biases, I am a very much a DIY person, even pre YouTube. I cut my own hair. I don't get my hair done at all ever. <laughs> Is it obvious? Um, I've never gotten my nails done at a salon. I rare, I don't think I've ever gotten my makeup professionally done ever, unless you count like a beauty guru on YouTube. A collab, yeah. Yeah, a collab. <laughs> uh, but that that's just my personality. So I am already in the bubble of people who don't really care enough to go pay for such services to have them done. And I definitely don't feel like I ever have to do that or had to do that in my life. Yeah. I think the other bias we absolutely have to acknowledge too is you own a nail polish line. Yeah. So it's in my interest for you to paint your <laughs> own nails at business. home. Yeah. yeah. We acknowledge that. But I do really want to underscore that even before Holo Taco, which launched just last year, I was simply an illogical for five years and before that was even big or in, in any meaningful way like um, profitable to me, I did my nails since high school. Mm -hmm. I did crazy colors on a different nail. We've talked about this before. Yeah. Um, and I would always do it not because I'm trying to impress a friend group. In fact, they kind of thought I was weird for painting a different <laughs> color on each nail. I would always look for hollow, which I didn't really know what the term was at the time. And I painted stripes and I just got into nail art and I loved the creativity and it had absolutely nothing to do with soliciting a reaction from my peers that to um, consider me more polished or important uh, and mm -hmm. especially not a reaction from men 
And clearly you're not the only one that feels away yeah. when you started posting nail art and sharing it on Instagram There's six, a huge seven community. years ago. There's a big community of people who yeah. are clearly doing this as an artistic hobby and passion rather than a, I got, I, I have to go to the salon or else my nails won't yeah. look good enough for society's expectations. But right? this, this brings me to the fact that there is, it's just, I'm not part of it, a community or not kind of, not, I won't call it a community. There's a community of nail artists and mm -hmm. people who enjoy for creativity. I know that because I've been in it for years and years, mm -hmm. but there's also lots of groups of people across the world who do seem to favor going to salons and haven't really thought about ever doing nails themselves because they are trying to maintain a certain shape, a length, a certain look, and maybe they are following more like New York fashion trends, you know, whenever those happen. Um, and it's it's a world that I am not really familiar with because A, I, I don't know much about salon, nail, gel, acrylic application. I'm yeah. not a licensed nail tech and that is a, a different world than the hobbyist mm -hmm. nail art and nail painting that, that I am in. But reading this article like reminded me that there is a whole giant group of people out there, mostly women, that feel this need maybe to to get their nails professionally manicured. And instead of it being something they do themselves and enjoy, it's something like, oh, my nails are growing out. Oh, I have to go get them filled. Yeah, It's something I can't relate to, but that I acknowledge exists. And I, I don't know if that's common among our audience because our audience is probably more biased, if anything, towards mm -hmm. maybe painting their own nails. But I do know that that is a, a world. It's just not one that I've grown up in or witnessed. But when I watch TV shows of like, the real housewives of Orange County or something <laughs> sure. like this is my limited exposure to these worlds. But like you hear them say things like that in conversation that, oh, my fill, I need to get a fill redone. Like this is awful. And it's like a chore that they have to go get this done. But and then they just, you know, continue on their phone or whatever they're trying to do while they get their nails filled and they're telling the manicurist to hurry up now. Yeah, but I, I think I, I think it would be easy to have like a visceral reaction to this article mm -hmm. as someone who really loves painting their nails and clearly knows there is a community of people who loves doing it for other and various reasons. But I think you are the outlier. And I think it's worth like saying, considering I'm the weird one. <laughs> I, I think we should judge the article <laughs> yeah. based on the fact that there are more women are used to this practice of having to go to a salon and getting artificial acrylic nails on that can be damaging and painful and I think we mm -hmm. can kind of unpack that a bit because we looked into some data about like the industries just to get a sense of how many people are painting their nails versus going to salons, right? Mm -hmm. It's kind of hard to get a very clear idea of that. But based on like pre-COVID data, it seems like you could say people, probably mostly women, spend about $8 billion a year going to salons, nail salons to get services done. Mm -hmm. Whereas the the buying nail polish for home use industry is like closer to between one and two billion dollars mm -hmm. in a given year. So it's like an eight to one, which shocks me, but just emphasizes the, the point that I am in yeah. that in the bubble of the DIY people who do mm -hmm. it themselves, which I found so interesting that there's way more people apparently, like I, I don't yeah. really know this, but it seems like there might be way more people who are choosing to go to salons mm -hmm. than paint their nails at home. And I guess I'm trying to think, like, why could that be? Because going to salons is more expensive mm -hmm. by a lot than, you know, buying a, a base coat, a polish and a top coat, painting your nails at home and doing that 200 times for the mm -hmm. same price as going to a salon and getting your manicure done once. Yeah. I mean, do you have any theories? Like one thing that comes to mind for me is uh, women have to basically, if you wear makeup regularly, you're putting on makeup every day. Uh, mm -hmm. You don't have to paint your nails every day, especially if you get like a professionally done manicure, right? You can get that and that can last so like I, I weeks do, potentially. I right? do see this because I know from feedback from Hollow Taco is that one reason people have been asking us to make gel polish is because gel lasts longer. Mm -hmm. Now, there are at-home gel kits, but it's a harder market because you need to have some a bit of knowledge and skills to use like the fancy gel machines and not everyone mm -hmm. wants to bother with that. So I think one reason why people do go to salons is that they can get special nail treatments and resins that last longer, like a gel, like an acrylic, mm -hmm. which isn't something most people want to mess around with at home. So that I can understand from a practical perspective. Yeah. 
Isn't it also a bit of a luxury too? Like you're having someone Else. kind of pamper your nails yeah. and give you a service. Like it's one of those kind of not too expensive luxuries I think a lot of people could indulge in. And it's also could be a social thing. Um, yeah. Like people would maybe go to the salon with their girlfriend, you know, or get like a pedicure and a foot massage together. Mm -hmm. And I can see that. So I'm not denying why there yeah. might be fun, you know, or relaxing reasons mm -hmm. to go to the salon and pick a different color each time. But it does mean that it's more of a, a self-care service that is applied or done to you. Whereas the at-home manicurist mm -hmm. is usually someone who finds relaxation in the actual painting of their own nails. Gotcha. Because, yeah, if these are the reasons that people go to salons to get their nails done, it should not be a surprise that when the world shuts down and everyone's staying home and you can't go to salons, that they're not going to replace that with painting their own nails necessarily, right? If they never wanted to paint their own nails in the first place. Yeah, if really the end result of having painted nails wasn't what you were going for or you didn't personally get enjoyment in having your uh, your nails being painted, right? But the author's not saying that people used to, you know, like getting pampered and now they don't care. They're saying that people used to get their nails done to meet a societal expectation of beauty and mm -hmm. now they're rejecting it because they don't have access to those services anymore, which I find puzzling. I'm like, what? I don't think most women are feeling like this liberation of freedom that because salons are closed now i don't have to succumb to the ideals of beauty that were prescribed for my like i literally don't think anyone is thinking that like if maybe it's hyperbolic but i think there's something there there's like maybe a nugget of truth because we're seeing a broader trend towards more of, of people giving up <laughs> no i'm just kidding <laughs> No, I was going to say, like, even in makeup, we're seeing a trend towards more natural looking mm -hmm. makeup, which is a little kind of funny in and of itself, right? Because, like, you wear makeup to look like you're not wearing makeup is just kind of a funny idea to no me. No makeup, makeup. No makeup, makeup. But I, like, I did that once. The the, <laughs> uh, the D'Amelio girls, yeah. like the biggest social media stars for young women right now on TikTok, they did a collab, right, with Morphe. Was it Morphe? Mm -hmm. And it's a very kind of like natural looking, understated way of doing makeup. And I actually kind of think that is a positive thing in a way. I understand if you're in a group of people who just thinks experimenting with very bold colors as a way of artistic expression. And if you get something out of that, good for you. I'm not going to judge it. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing that young people are seeing their idols in these two girls selling the idea of just, you know, maybe a little bit of playful color, but not putting so make much makeup on your face that you kind of start looking like an alien or just something like a CGI. Because we were trending in that direction for a while, right? I feel like a few mm -hmm. years ago, a lot of the makeup and marketing we were seeing was like this over photoshopped, uh, absurdly caked on makeup look that made people just f frankly not look human anymore. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it's the worst thing that there's a trend towards not putting so much makeup on your face that you don't, you know, aren't basically just entirely covering up everything on your skin. I'll tell you right now that I think people would counter that and say, it doesn't matter how much makeup someone puts on their face. It's as much as they want to. And sometimes the art of excess is part of the art. So that doesn't just mean like as many crazy colors, but it also means the extent of like the heavy contouring and the drawing of lines and the reshaping of the face isn't always done as like a vanity project. I think some people mm -hmm. do see that as what can I do to change the shape of my face? And like, how can I challenge my art skills? And some people who do this makeup like are truly incredible at making someone else look like someone else mm -hmm. and now that i understand what you mean how that can maybe trickle down and be a bad thing if we're encouraging young women to look like kylie jenner yeah. <laughs> you know like everyone just shape your face to look like kylie <laughs> jenner yeah that's not really good either because that doesn't inspire self-esteem or confidence in young women if they're constantly told that every day you got to reshape your face because yours isn't good enough but i just wanted to balance what you said with that some people just it's not about pleasing some ideal. They just want to challenge their own artistic capabilities. Yeah, and I totally respect that. And again, if that's why you use... I'm not judging why people do or don't use makeup, but I just think to the extent that young girls are mm -hmm. watching their idols use makeup, I don't know if it's the worst thing that we are seeing a trend towards 
a, a little bit of a more minimalist natural look right just the same way like when a celebrity like alicia keys comes out and stops wearing makeup on television that's seen as this big statement and you know i don't know how important or empowering that is but i i do see that I think it's. I think it, that can yeah. matter. Yeah. I think that was an important and empowering moment when she did that. Now, some people didn't like it because it was as if she was suggesting that you shouldn't wear makeup, and people don't like that who see mm-hmm. it as artistic expression. But I appreciate where I think she was trying to come from. And as someone who hasn't been able to wear makeup, <laughs> oh, because of your allergies. In case, yeah, you didn't know, I haven't been wearing any makeup at all except like a few dots to cover my pimples. <laughs> But no eye makeup, no mascara. And I think that's often where women especially will go to is eye makeup to cover up your circles, mascara to open your eyes and, you know, fill in your eyebrows. Um, I haven't been able to do any of that since for for six, six, seven months now. And um, I probably will, like, I don't know the next time I can play with makeup. So I am kind of sad that Mm -hmm. I can't, but I do appreciate that there's other influencers or celebrities out there that are like, I don't need makeup because I also feel the same way. I'm like, I don't need makeup. I liked it. It was fun. I'm sad. I can't play with it right Mm -hmm. now, but I'm also not mad at my, that I have to show you. I'm not ashamed. I don't really care in a meaningful way. I, I just care that I have a health issue <laughs> that isn't yeah. resolved. But no, like, could we unpack this a little? So you're... Are we not talking about the end of the manicure? Are we talking about makeup here, Ben? <laughs> we could t- it's, it's part of the conversation, sure. right? Sure. But I, I do want to touch on that a bit, though. Could you elaborate? All right, now you're interviewing me. <laughs> you're, you're sad that you can't use makeup anymore. Yeah. Is that mostly because uh, you would sometimes do very creative, bold looks, mostly for videos or just to have fun on the weekend? Or is there, are there other reasons you are sad about not being able to do makeup? It is, a, it is 100% because I can't have fun um, with it mm-hmm. and for a look on the weekend. Now, I have never, for years now, like I definitely did in my, in my youth, but in my yeah. recent old lady days in my 30s, I have not worn makeup unless it was to film a YouTube video. Like I don't care if I go out or I go when no, I go to work. If, if you're going I'm to not a wedding, wearing makeup. If you're going to a wedding if, or something okay, like yeah, that. But I was like makeup. Snapchatting my makeup that I did for the wedding and sharing it with my followers. Wait, are you saying you wouldn't have worn makeup to the last wedding we went to if you hadn't Snapchatted that you were putting makeup on? Because I'd do it and I'd <laughs> show people like Simply Face Logical did this. Well, and... I understand there's dual yeah. purposes. I don't know. But... That's a good question. I mean, I probably might have put on a little bit, but I guess that's so infrequent and small pales in comparison sure, sure. in my Special mind. Special occasions, right? But it's sad. Like when I came out with a different nail polish collection, the rainbow collection, I was so excited to do a rainbow gradient on my eyes. Uh-huh. That's what I was thinking all along. But then I broke out in a giant rash and couldn't do anything yeah. and I like to match oh I don't know if you notice I match my nails to my my mugs or my cat ears to my shirt yeah. or I like to do that it's just fun and I can't do it with my eyeshadow anymore and I miss that and that's the creative like color matching that I personally really like to do but I guess it's just important to know that you personally don't feel any sort of do, are you asking uh, me if I feel ugly without makeup? No, no, no. But do you ever feel that so you can't wear makeup because of your allergy issues? Are there mm-hmm. ever times where that's uh, you don't have you don't feel any sort of societal pressure that now people are going to judge you for looking tired or anything like that in day to day life? Mm. Or has quarantine been liberating to the extent that you don't really have to see other people? So who cares that you're not wearing makeup? That's a good point. Um, I did in the beginning of YouTube when I wasn't wearing makeup. I think there was some comments, you know, saying you look tired. Mm -hmm. But as soon as I explained that I was dealing with some eye issues, like everyone kind of stopped that. But it was there. And if we were going to work... Actually, that's not true. I I don't don't wear under eye concealer. You weren't wearing makeup at work at all, right? So, but... 10, no, eight years ago in my first government job, I used to wear concealer and mascara every day just to look alive, look awake, you Mm -hmm. know, as the ads were telling me to do, to to look awake as a young woman. And I remember one day I just didn't wear that makeup. And I had coworkers ask me if I was okay, how much sleep did I get last night? And that's always stuck with me. And ever since that moment in like 2012, I just decided I'm not going to wear makeup anymore because every time I choose not to, people ask me if something is wrong. So if I just never wear makeup, they'll get used to my normal face and no one will ever consider me tired anymore. It's like you. Do people ask you if you're tired? 
No, that's, look, that's just your I, face. If I look really tired, they might ask me if I'm tired. Yeah, but for, for me, it was exaggerated, <laughs> the difference I, between concealer and kidding, no concealer. Yeah, yeah no, m m men don't have to deal with this yeah. issue in the same way, clearly. And it's right. also, maybe that's good advice to, I mean, I don't want to be the one saying this, but if you're starting a new job, maybe you don't want to look much more amazing than normal in how you well, are dressing and presenting yourself. The other yourself. thing is you, you, it shouldn't matter what you look like at your job. People should judge you and your employer should judge you based on your skills and your performance, not your makeup. Sure. But I just, there's many contexts in life where you're trying to make good first impressions, sure. whether it's a new job or a date and stuff. Right. But yeah. Yeah. I, anyway, that's a that's a weird tangent. So, anyways, <laughs> anyways. But, well, back. actually, to tie this back to what you said, and then nails is Alicia Keys did make that statement mm -hmm. by not wearing makeup, but it was only a statement because she said it was. Had she just like not worn makeup, I don't think people would have inferred that. Really, but, I think people. No, would. but they might have like called her weird or like asked if something was wrong, which would have proved her point, right? Because okay. that's maybe what she wanted. But she said what purposefully what she was doing and why yeah. now if someone doesn't wear nail polish and they just go naked nails are they making would anyone a, notice are they would, <laughs> are they making a bold statement like i would argue no <laughs> yeah like there are women on red carpets for like the grammys and the oscars and stuff they don't even all have their nails painted right like i, I just hmm. yeah I, I feel like this article if you'd swapped makeup for nail polish in a lot of ways i think i would have been more understanding of the argument yeah I guess I just, I mean, That's what I'm I saying. can't relate to this Who at all, hurt but her? neither can Which you. Which manicurist hurt her in her life? <laughs> I don't mind that publications like the New York Times are publishing critical, thoughtful articles about the beauty industry either, mm -hmm. though. Like, I don't want to discourage this, even if... But I almost feel like it's kind of reaching. Like, they, they sure. didn't really have much left to write about. And they were like, what can we write about? Well, let's pick something that died. Oh, manicures. <laughs> The manicure died. Yeah. And, and do, maybe, we need, do we need more articles about all the industries and businesses that died in 2020? And so maybe it's not totally their fault because I understand they're, they clearly failed in the article to, to see that there was a possibility for anyone who enjoys painting their nails at, at home and why that's a thing. Mm -hmm. that it doesn't acknowledge that at all. Like, just to be clear, they're clearly existing in the maybe a New York bubble where a lot of people just go to the salon and, or, or nothing. But I guess that's not just a New York bubble. So I guess we don't entirely have an appreciation for how many people paint their nails at home versus how many people go to salons. Or do we? So we have some idea based off those industry figures, but you also polled your audience on the Simply Pod Logical YouTube community channel, and you also did the same thing on your Twitter. Mm -hmm. Just to, obviously this is a biased sample. We're talking about people who have chosen to follow you, Yes, right? we must disclose the bias and the methodology. <laughs> We're not saying this is a representative of sample of just the general population. But when we looked at this, we asked people like whether before uh, COVID, did they paint their nails, get their nails painted at a salon, or did they do neither? Like they don't wear nail polish in either case. Mm -hmm. So pre-pandemic, 56% of people say they painted their own nails, 9% of people say they painted at a salon, and 35% of people said that ni neither applies to them. Mm -hmm. So here we see that at least my Simply Podlogical YouTube audience, over half does paint their own nails. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think if the New York Times article were to pull their circle of people, sure. it would be like none. <laughs> it, it, or it would be less certainly. Yeah. But clearly you have an audience that's more. But I think what's more interesting is when we ask people before and after how it changed, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. if we look after, 58% uh, people say they paint their own nails. So up 2%. Yeah, so there's a 2% increase in people saying they paint their own nails. After COVID. Uh, the people who say they get their nails painted in a salon drops down to 4%, whereas it was at 9% before. And people who say they don't wear nail polish at all now is up 3%, uh, from 35% to 38%. Hmm. So these do seem like small numbers, but... When you think of the, like the salon is, is more, it drops in half, right? From 9% to 4%. So that's a pretty significant shift. Mm -hmm. And you see maybe a few of those people might now jump to the category of painting their nails at home. But then, but I it, think yeah. for the most part, I mean, this is an assumption or an inference and kind of an educated guess, 
But I think it's more likely to think those people are now falling into the neither category than the painting their nails so, at home category. Yeah, exactly what the article was suggesting. Yeah. That you used to get them done at the salon and now you're liberated. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do that anymore. You can go free. You can run naked. <laughs> but if you're someone who painted your nails at home for yourself before, mm -hmm. that hasn't changed in quarantine. That number hasn't gone down. If anything, it's gone a little bit up. Maybe you're painting your nails more. If you're someone who paints your nails, but just because you're home more and you have more time. Maybe. And I think that's a good indication that even if you're home alone and not interacting with other people, it's pretty clear that you're not doing that to impress other people so much, right? Mm -hmm. It's a more of a, a self-interest sort of passion or hobby or artistic outlet. I wonder if the New York Times repeated this exact poll, which they should have done something because they're making this entire <laughs> argument on no data at all. Like they're just assuming that that what they say is, oh, no, they, is how like, the, the I chips I want to give the person who wrote the article some credit. They they interviewed a bunch of different owners of nail polish companies who have done market research into there. There's a shift in the nail polish industry sure. towards just like taking care of your nails and natural nail type products. But right? that's qualitative. I would have appreciated some quantitative to go <laughs> along with that. At least some mixed methods. But <laughs> there has been an increase in revenues related to nail care items more mm -hmm. than nail polish there's your quantitative sure. stat <laughs> yeah okay but that doesn't mean that people aren't painting their own nails they could be painting no. their own nails and caring for them which mm -hmm. you should do both yeah right? so that doesn't really explain that here's another maybe compared to makeup too right do you think the number of people who were doing their makeup themselves before quarantine are just as likely doing their makeup day to day now yeah. that they're just stuck at home, like maybe they're on Zoom calls and things like that can affect it, but... My ge my guess would be you're probably doing it less, especially if there's way less social gatherings. Mm -hmm. Like I know as a, when I was young, I would do my makeup pretty much just on weekends when we were going out. I didn't do my makeup for school or, or work really. Sure. So yeah, if, if you weren't going on social outings, I'd probably not be doing my, my makeup. Yeah. The people doing makeup now, even though you're not socially interacting with like anyone outside of your household probably is probably a really good indication of the people who are truly doing makeup for creative as that expression. artistic creative yeah. outlet. So maybe right? the average person who used to wear makeup and then go out, you know, with their friends and have a chance to show off like their work is now just doing it at home, taking a selfie and posting it on Instagram just like all the beauty influencers do they, who do their makeup almost every day, take a picture and then take it off, right? Because you can make mm -hmm. that argument. I know they're creating content with it, but in some ways, maybe the average person is creating content to have just some reason, some excuse, some end yeah. result of like remembering the makeup they did if they did some cool look and they didn't have anyone to show, it's like less fun, right? Like you yeah. want to show, and it's not a vanity thing. I mean, it, it can be, sure. but it's not always a vanity thing because sometimes you just want to capture what you did and you want to share it with someone because people like to share their art. It's the same reason why I started sharing my nail art on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I was just about to say, you yeah. could say it's, this isn't just a makeup argument. That's a nail art argument too, I yeah. guess. So for this poll, though, I do one thing that shocked, shocked me. <laughs> yeah, what's that? Shocking, breaking news was how high the percentage of don't wear nail polish is <laughs> on my poll. Right? Yeah, well, I yeah. mean, is that that shocking to you? I mean, yeah, I, I, I'm <laughs> kind of shocked. What's the joke? Does Christine, Christine do nail art yeah, anymore? <laughs> I know that's a joke, but 38% of you since, since COVID says you don't wear nail polish at all. Mm -hmm. that's over a third that's almost two-fifths what were you expecting you think most of your audience painted their well, nails I, I, anecdotally i've observed over the years people have said like i don't even paint my nails and i watch simply nail logical which yeah. i always found so cute and like i'd, I'd give a heart to that mm -hmm. comment but i i thought that was almost like joking like just being <laughs> funny and supportive uh -huh. but i guess this does show me and like it's important for me to know this that i do have a quite a big audience that doesn't paint their nails and i mean i i'm not i'm not saying i'm like totally surprised and you must paint your nails <laughs> i understand why people watch my channel even if they're not interested in nail polish especially in the last two three years when i've been making content that isn't just about like the best black nail polish mm -hmm. because why would someone who doesn't paint their nails like care yeah. right but they might just want to be entertained by like dumb troom troom hacks or 
you know, (laughs) something with my cats. So I understand that. I guess I was just like surprised at how high this was because nail polish is such a big part of my life and I do it so often that I I, I don't know. Like, I guess I want to ask you guys. Like not no, no pressure. This well, those is those of you this who don't paint your no, nails. No, but I, I genuinely want to understand <laughs> yeah, yeah. it. And I I looked through the comments on this post, and just without having asked this question, I think some of the answers might be that people either don't care enough to spend time on their nails because they feel like their nails aren't good looking enough. Like that, oh. I feel like that might be a concern for some people because I see comments all the time. Like I would paint my nails if they looked like yours. And I think, yeah, and I, I, I don't know how much of an insecurity this is for people to, that mm. they feel like they don't have nice looking nails, but it, it makes me sad if, if that's the reason, because please don't compare. It's like makeup. Like I would do my makeup if I was as pretty as her, you know, and it, it makes me sad because you can do your nails no matter how long, no, sh- no matter how short your nails are. Mm-hmm. And it's just like fun with color. And I really don't think other people are judging you based on the shape of your nails. Like, I guess they're judging themselves, but this yeah, is the they're, internalized they're uh, yeah. oppression. Of like, isn't this an argument <laughs> that there is a societal beauty standard for well, nails? I would if that's like the to, reason you're seeing? Let's get rid of that right here, right now. <laughs> yeah, well, Ladies and gentlemen. I, I hereby decree that yeah. that insecurity no longer exists. <laughs> yeah, I think that if you are... If you care for your nails and you find a way to to love doing them and see the benefits of like the relaxation, the playing with colors, and if that is something that speaks to you, you will over time take care of your nails. The other thing I see all the time is people saying, I bite my nails. Mm-hmm. So what's the point in painting them? Because they, they look ugly, right? If you start painting your nails and you take care of them and you put put nail oil on them, and you start to notice that they're growing out better and you have less hangnails and there's there's less like uh, blood or, or bitten parts, You it will make you more motivated to continue to care for your nails. And then you may find more enjoyment in painting them because I can mm-hmm. kind of understand and empathize with someone who feels like, what's the point? I bite them. They're so ugly. I'm never going to get them to a place that like looks nice enough to paint if that is a particular place that exists. I don't think it does, but I I understand that some people feel that way. So I just want to encourage people that like no one is judging you. If you want to try it, then go for it. And also just sometimes putting, you know, some effort into caring for your nails, I think will give you that outcome that you might be looking for, which is just like nicer, healthier looking nails, right? That's what people seem to want. I guess I've never thought about the fact that so many people are insecure about their nails in this way yeah is that weird yeah but it makes me think like we were maybe too critical of this article if she's really touching that a lot of women maybe do feel a lot of hang-ups about their nails and their nails supposed to look a certain way so is that why people go but i would i would argue that if people feel insecure about their bitten nails Mm -hmm. going to a salon and getting like heavy acrylics done is not going to help solve that problem at all well it it masks the problem Mm -hmm. with fake nails right but yeah it would be weird if we didn't acknowledge to some degree like i'm not trying to discourage people from supporting their local nail salon or going to nail salons if that's something you enjoy doing but i think you have to acknowledge that getting those fake nails and those harsh chemicals and glues and all that can be very damaging to your nails right Mm -hmm. your natural nails i've i've read that and i know there's some like debate over whether it's the chemical itself or the removal process that's what i've heard most Mm -hmm. of but either way the process of getting a lot of these heavy duty resins and the stuff that you need to get done by like a licensed nail tech like acrylics or shellac i think is another Mm -hmm. one that people do it can cause damage to your natural nail bed especially the ones that need to be like filed off your nail like when they do acrylics, yeah. uh, sometimes the only way to remove them without it's like, like a power drill is a power drill, <laughs> and it's it it eats at your natural nail yeah. when it gets down there. And so I can understand how you just end up in this never ending cycle of needing to put more acrylic on to cover up your thin nails. But I will inspire you <laughs> to if if you let all that go, and maybe it's quarantine, maybe you have followed what this article is saying in that you're no longer going to the salon. And you are maybe noticing that you are happy with your natural nails. Maybe you're taking care of them. Maybe you're nail oiling them. 
then just painting regular nail polish is something that you can do too at home. All and right. What? That was, no, that was a good speech. Oh. Very inspiring. <laughs> I don't know. I, I feel like I almost feel bad that there's people out there that aren't confident in their, their nails and it like make, it breaks my heart. <laughs> I, like, I don't want to assume the 38% of people though, who don't paint their nails watching you just don't feel good right. enough about their no, fingernails no, no, no. to paint I, their I nails either, I was just either, pointing right? out like a common comment that I saw yeah. was people saying like they would paint their nails if they looked as good as mine, quote. Like yeah. my, my guess would just be that people like watching content from people who are passionate about things even if they're not interested in doing those things themselves. Yeah. And then there's, we also acknowledge there's, maybe you just don't care. <laughs> like, which is fine. I'm not trying to. Maybe you just don't care at maybe all. Maybe you just don't give a shit. Like you don't care about painting your nails, which is you, totally fine. You know who cares though? The comment section. So, oh. Do you want to take a Wait, look our, at. our comment section? All no. the comment section. Usually it's not a good, your comment section is always very positive, dear. Because you have yeah. a very lovely audience. Thank you guys. Hello. We love you. <laughs> But like when you see an article, like any, any article, any news article or on a news website, when you look in the comment section, it's usually a group of pretty unhinged people that comment on articles on these websites. So we thought it would be fun to take a little peek into what people's reactions were to this article on the New York Times uh, website. Yeah. What does Karen have to say? <laughs> All right. First one. From uh, Ted in Oregon, uh, as a lifetime part of the fashion world, I must say it would be a relief to see the tacky nail culture end. I have dealt with the upper end of women confident in who they are for 60 years, and they didn't need artificial nails or little sparkly things to make a statement. <laughs> the European manicurists who were in the high-end salons in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, 80s often did little more than perfectly manicured nails with a coat of clear and nail white under the tip. All this in beautiful, tranquil, tasteful setting like Kenneth in New York or Mr. Lee in San Francisco. All right, this goes on for a while. I don't think I'm going like, to read more of it. <laughs> Ted, Ted, who are you, Ted? Are I have you, never Ted? met someone like you in my real life, but I have seen people like him on TV. <laughs> Is this like a representation of your typical New York Times uh, reader? Well, that's something else that should be pointed out. Is the article is written for a specific audience, right? Yeah, yeah. And the audience of the New York Times, not that I am like that aware but from what i can tell it's a little bit more like elitist and maybe the people reading these articles have the disposable income to have been able to go to the salon all the time right and a lot of people don't have that income so if they read this article they're like excuse me what the heck what who someone should have told me i needed to have my nails professionally manicured all my life like <laughs> like it's kind of ridiculous so i do think it comes from a perspective of kind of an elite group here and it's just like it's judgmental for no reason like who if someone enjoys their nails being sparkly like why care people would be so <laughs> exactly. much exactly like that okay well obviously we have a self-interest in sparkly nail polish yeah, right yeah. but this applies basically to anything makeup earrings if, if someone else enjoys something you don't need to understand why they enjoy mm -hmm. it you know you can let other people enjoy the things they like and not worry about it yeah, just stop caring about why other people like, <laughs> like doing things and stop trying to tell people why or justify why they're no longer doing it because now they're free of oppression. Like, what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, next comment from uh, AR in Yonkers, New York. There's tons of data showing that long artificial nails harbor bacteria. It's why they're not allowed for people who work in Oregon. It's always seemed hypocritical to, or, or no, or. worked in OR. Uh, the operating rooms. Operating room, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's always seemed hypocritical to me that uh, people who are gluten-free and doing all these cleanses also don't think twice about nail polish and dyed hair. I don't know. Is this the part where we call Dr. Mike? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have him on speed dial? I mean, like, is, is there something to the fact that long nails are less hygienic, Christine? I have heard that, but it's it's not because of the type of person you are or the finish you choose. It's because... If you have long nails and you scratch at things like food or your yeah. skin, yeah, you're going to get some DNA <laughs> under your fingertips. And yeah. that's how they solve crime. So everyone have long nails. No, I'm just kidding. But I do think, yeah, there is some truth. But you know what the answer to that is? What is it? Clean your nails. <laughs> 
yeah. just clean them. You can take a little, I use the end of a cuticle pusher or you can use a Q-tip and you just clean it. Or you can use your other nail and just go like that. I mean, that sounds like work though. Why don't you just cut your nails really short? Because I enjoy <laughs> my nails being long and painted. Can I? Uh, <laughs> More space to paint. Are there any uh, circumstances under which having long nails is harder for you to <laughs> clean? <laughs> I get this question a lot whenever I'm on the trending page. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, though, like let's uh, when you're going to the bathroom, is well, having long nails a challenge? Gonna, how did I know this is going to be a man's question? <laughs> Okay, how do you, do you, you have to, is there a certain, does having long nails technique? change the way you do things in the bathroom? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Just got demonetized, right? Um, do you like, have a technique? Well, I f it's the same way I handle anything. I don't go like, <laughs> I don't grip with my claws and dig Whoa. my nails into things. I almost use the flat part of my fingertip to do things. So I'm pressing less with my nail and more with the, the middle of my fingertip to grab and to do things. <laughs> okay. I might need a demonstration. Here. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Could you just like wrap your hand in the... That's why I use so much toilet paper. Is that why we go through so much toilet paper? It's not <laughs> good for the environment. Man, stop. <laughs> okay, AR. All right. Next comment from uh, Janet Baker in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, God gave us two hands and 10 fingers to accomplish productive work. No need to embellish them. Expensive, vain, unhealthy. I'm going to hell. God doesn't uh, approve <laughs> doesn't of you approve. painting your nails. It's vain, right? Yeah, totally. Do you think this woman wears makeup though? Janet? Yeah. Does she Janet... probably wears blue eyeliner. She's probably like, wandering into a Target right now without a mask and like <laughs> challenging them. She's probably throwing the mask on the floor. Um, yeah, this, this is ridiculous. Yeah, this doesn't and, deserve a response. And this is, uh, well, it's a stereotype that women who do their nails or embellish themselves in any way are vain like what is that i don't like that i can understand how some of that might be true but for so many people that's not why they do it do mm -hmm. i look vain to you like <laughs> yeah. it's kind of ridiculous <laughs> is that a trick question i'll pray for janet <laughs> all right uh next one from kathy I have very thick toenails on my big toes, and these are very hard to cut and tend to build up keratin to the point that my shoes hurt. How do you know if your shoes hurt? Like your I think her, her, feet her hurt. foot hurts in her I can, shoe. I can buzz them down myself, but sometimes having a manicurist do it is more effective and healthier. Not all of this is just for looks. Thank you, Kathy. This is yeah. another good point. And I think my grandmother actually did this. She did, She also had really thick toenails and would go to the salon to get a pedicure. And mm -hmm. another reason why people get pedicures specifically is that it is hard and strenuous to reach your own feet. Okay. Right? So, is it? And, and you should have good toenail care just for good hygiene, whether or not you paint them, if, if you're of the belief that painting is vanity. But just like cutting your toenails is something that all people should do, right? Yeah. yeah. yeah but most should, people can do it. You think it's hard to reach your I think toenails? there are some people, like some people with, with a disability, some older people, uh, okay. and uh, people who find it uncomfortable to especially paint your toenails because you have to stay in that position for like 10 minutes. But then even clipping your toenails when it's thick, like Kathy or my grandma, <laughs> is really hard, right? So there are so many reasons why people go to a salon for like non-vanity, <laughs> this like social expectation reason, especially when it's your toenails. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Next one from Kat, Kat? in yeah. California. When will the price tag of being female ever be equivalent to that of a male? Uh, ditching the manicurist is a start, <laughs> but we have to pay for so many things that they don't. Haircuts and coloring costs 10 times what theirs do, hmm. plus more expensive clothing, bras, makeup, jewelry, plastic surgery, and now many more required procedures to be socially acceptable, like Botox and fillers. I did not know that I was required to have plastic surgery <laughs> to so, be accepted. Again, this is like a, a commenter going overboard, but there is a point here, mm -hmm. right? I don't think it's true that most people live in a context where 
plastic surgery is required Unless to be accepted. Unless you live in California, like Kat. She is from so California. She does, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've spoken about this before. Whenever yeah. like the issue of plastic surgery or changing your face comes up, we are so like foreign mm -hmm. to that concept because I literally don't know anyone in my personal life in Canada who has done that. Yeah. I know plenty of people in California. Sure. But it's a world we don't live in. So I find it, it hard to to talk about or understand because I'm just like confused. But like even if you took Botox and fillers and stuff off the table here, because that's a more complicated issue, I feel. Sure. There is definitely a point here. I don't think nail painting is a really good example, but there are expenses women have that the, yeah. that men don't. For sure. The tampon like, tax. Yeah. Tampons is the most, like birth control stuff in general is probably the mm -hmm. most obvious example, yeah. right? So I feel like maybe Kat should be campaigning for that before... Getting mad at things like manicures well, and haircuts. But. but there is some valid reasons why some th services that happen to be more used by women cost more, such as haircuts. Like if a hairdresser has to cut my hair, you know, it should cost more <laughs> than cutting hair Ben's cut. hair. Not because I'm a woman, but because my hair is 36 inches long. <laughs> Men's... That's but that being said, obviously, not all women have super long hair like me, and some men could have just hair as long as mine. So I think that uh, barbers or hairdressers should charge based on the length of their client's hair and not a gender. Hmm. All right. And last one from Mrs. P in Seattle. Uh, I've always done my own manicures. I don't wear acrylics, so it's just the filling and applying polish but it's kind of a meditative process, a bit of quiet me time. It can be very soothing to apply the polish, almost an ASMR-like experience, only visual instead of auditory. Yes. So look, here we, we have at least one comment on the article itself of someone kind of pushing back on this idea mm -hmm. that they're only painting their nails because of some like internalized oppression and just saying like, I like painting my nails. Yeah, so it's, it's sad that this is a minority pointing this out, but... What was interesting is on the New York Times Instagram, when they posted the, the picture equivalent for this article, the vast majority of the comments were all saying exactly this and were upset with the article and saying like, how, like our, hello, like there's so many reasons why we would paint our nails. We love it. It's creative expression. It's relaxing. It calms anxiety. And it's just something we can do for ourselves. We can do it at home safely. And they were ultimately like upset with the authors for ignoring that. And I found that interesting that on Instagram, that's the, the dominant response. And yeah. on their own audience comment section, that is very much a minority response. So mm. shout out to my Instagram nail blogger friends who, <laughs> who all are of the same opinion of me. And shout out to Michelle Swatches, who brought this article to my attention in the first place. <laughs> There's a community of people on Instagram, nail artists and nail swatches that were definitely like, upset i guess by this article yeah. because it failed to acknowledge almost our existence if you want to put it that way yeah but yeah, yeah like if in case you're one of the 38 percent of people who doesn't paint your nails mm -hmm. maybe one reason to try isn't because you're vain but it's because the the action of putting on nail polish by yourself put on some good music can actually be quite soothing and relaxing it's like painting it's like any kind of of art it's a adult adult coloring books but on your nails you know <laughs> it's 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 soothing i find it the same way now sometimes i have to paint my nails for camera so that's different because it's turned into a bit more of a performance but when i'm painting my nails just by myself at my desk with my like low light on then yeah i love it i put on music and i like to see the different glares and the combinations is something i'm personally interested in but it's 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 me time it's selfish mm -hmm. selfish me time in a good way and I like it. Yeah, and it could be your selfish me time too. Or if you don't want to paint your nails, no one's forcing you to. Yeah, no one's forcing you to. <laughs> I really hope there aren't a bunch of people out there doing it just because they think they have to. I don't, I, like, that's what I, I have no idea what the article is talking about when they say, <laughs> like, the social pressure and now we are liberated as women. And I'm like, what the heck? I mean, but you at least acknowledge there are people out there who feel bad about not having nice fingernails, and that's mm -hmm. probably disproportionately women, we would guess, right? Yeah. So there is like a, a nugget of something to this. But I think, yeah, the most egregious thing this article did was just completely ignore the fact that 
people might just be painting their nails because they enjoy doing it themselves at home and not going to salons. So in conclusion, it's not the death of the manicure, okay? <laughs> New York Fashion Week or whatever. <laughs> New York Fashion Week. I don't know. New York something. <laughs> New York time. You got a bias. This is fake news. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Uh, My manicure is alive and well. And yours can be too if you want it to, because no one in society is telling you it's dead. Don't they actually say that? I've heard that nail polish is a recession-proof industry. I can't mm. remember where I heard this, but it's one of those things that for the... The lipstick effect. Yeah, like a lot of beauty products in general, I think, I know some are more expensive than others, but they are somewhat protected from economic uh, uh, declines or recessions to some degree, because... People are still willing to spend money pampering themselves to some degree, even mm -hmm. when money is tight, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's called the lipstick effect with the idea that you can afford just a small luxury, just a small tube of lipstick mm -hmm. because you, despite going through economic turmoil, need something just to feel a little bit better about yourself. It's just like a, a little thing that makes you feel a bit happier and so mm -hmm. th the same thing happens with nail polish you can buy a 13 dollar bottle of nail polish and paint your nails at home with the same bottle for for a year <laughs> yeah okay yeah. interesting well apologies to manny mua we were gonna have him on today we were uh, <laughs> mua uh, i prefer saying mua anytime i see mua it's mua 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 apologies to manny mua <laughs> next time i see you, i'm gonna give you a big kiss nope coronavirus <laughs> There will be no kissing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. If you have thoughts on this article, I'd love yeah. to hear them. I feel like there must have been an angle or a path we didn't consider. Mm -hmm. As with all our podcasts, I just want to say, like, there's obviously a lot of things we could or couldn't say about a particular topic. We're just kind of having a live conversation about it in the moment. I always read the comments and then I'm like, fuck, I should have said that. Yeah, like, that People do happens. a better job at thinking what I should say than I do. Mm -hmm. I think it's important, though, to have uh, show people examples of imperfect conversations. Anytime I've listened back to one of the podcasts, I always think I could have said something better or I missed something really obvious or we should have said something else. But mm -hmm. I think we just have to accept that, like, yeah, we have the option to, to edit and watch these back before we upload them. They're not live, but... But you can't add something. No. And yeah. I think it's just okay, like, to normalize having organic conversations about things without having to be perfect all the time too. Yeah, but then you say something that, you know, rejects or uh, avoids or eliminates a particular something and then people take offense to that. So you do need to consider at the end of the podcast how it sounds and what you said and is is it complete and are you missing something we have a responsibility for the mm -hmm. things we say and if either of us said anything like insanely offensive i think we would have to address it right but i just think the threshold for people are so eager to criticize people for saying something like the least bit wrong these days and it's just not a sort of healthy mindset to have i think when it comes to consuming content did we say something like wrong in this i'm like this no is no like, i don't know why we're being we're so talking serious about, about manicures. this i'm yeah, mostly yeah, just saying know. you know like there's probably an aspect of this we didn't consider at all like a whole industry and many people's jobs depend on nail yeah. salons we didn't touch on that at all and mm -hmm. that's an aspect of it that we were maybe maybe later we'd be like oh wow i wish we'd talked about that I yeah, just no. said it now, but you know yeah. what I mean? There's always something like this we For could have sure. talked about. And that we yeah, didn't. me being in my biased little little bubble here of like the creative nail painter, which apparently is the minority in New York. I don't know. Or right? the, well, the industry data doesn't lie, right? I think the bubble of people who paint their own nails at home clearly is smaller than people who go to mm -hmm. salons, right? That's yeah. interesting. I didn't really have an appreciation for that until we looked up the data too. Yeah, me neither. And recently I got a package from Twitter I, I don't yeah. know if you saw my Snapchat or Instagram stories where they put together a book about trends and beauty and what percent of it was was uh, foundation, concealer, or eyeshadow, mm -hmm. and nail. There was no nail polish, but there was nail art, and it was 2.2%. That's of it. Of all posts on Twitter about yeah. beauty? Is that the... Yeah. Oh, wow. And then they, they posted a picture of the top, I don't know, 30 or 50, I can't remember, how many influencers in beauty, not one nail polish person on it. <laughs> Like, I wonder, is, yeah. is nail polish just not really counted in beauty or is it just so small that it doesn't matter? I mean, we know relative to makeup. 
it's, it's, a small, it's smaller. Yeah. If I, if we, if we ever see a comment that like you started a nail polish line just to make money, I always laugh. Cause it's like, <laughs> if you just wanted to make money, you would have started was, a makeup no, line. No, I would have started a kid's channel on YouTube. Actually, <laughs> if I wanted to make 20 million a year, Ryan's toys move over. We're having a kid, Ben. <laughs> I hate kids and I'd still do it. <laughs> no, I'm I am joking. That was a joke. I'm just saying if you wanted to make money, that's like that's what you would do. You wouldn't start a nail polish. Line. You'd start a kids channel and a makeup line for kids. Not a bad idea. <laughs> All, All right, right everybody. everybody. Thank you Thanks for tuning so much in. for watching. We'll see you next Taco Happy Tuesday. Happy Taco Tuesday. See y'all later. <laughs> Bye. Bye.